if you're using NAN but shy away from using the NAN webhook node because it looks complex, you're missing out on connecting to thousands of apps that don't have native NAN integrations. And I get it. Test versus production URLs, authentication, HTTP methods, it seems scary. But in reality, it takes around 15 minutes to understand the NAN webhook node, and it will unlock almost unlimited automation possibilities, because you can trigger workflows from almost any app or any service. Now, just for reference, my name is Rob, and I run windgrowth.com. We're an operations and AI automation firm. We work with over 90 clients, and webhook triggers are the foundation of almost everything we build. So let's break down the webhook node. First off, what we want to do is we want to go to NAN and we want to put in webhook. So we'll see webhook and respond to webhook. The most common one that we use, and I want to focus this video really on the regular webhook trigger, is the first one with the little lightning bolt. Now, if we open this up, we see a bunch of different fields. We have options and we also have settings. So let's go from the bottom. First of all, you have the webhook URL. So you can think of it as an address. If anyone wants to send you mail, they would put in an address to send it to. So this URL is the endpoint of the webhook to where all the data is going. One of the small little differences is you got test and you got production URL. I'll get to that in a little bit, but if you pick between them, you can see that the only difference really is this says webhook test and this says production. Then you'll see the HTTP method. So if you open this up, you see a bunch of them. You don't need to understand all of them. What you need to understand is when you use something like API calls or regular HTTP request nodes, which I also have a video on if you want to learn more about, get lets you pull data, post lets you kind of put data in. Most of the time we'll use get and post. Now the difference is you want to make sure it matches with how the data being sent out from a different app actually works. Do they use get or posts? So these are the two ones that you will work with. You don't really need to understand more than just look at the documentation or what they send and pick the same one. Then you have the path, which you can also see here. You can customize this to give it a name, something like video about webhooks. And as you can see, it automatically changes the URL as well. Then you have authentication and so many people don't think about this. Now, if you are testing your webhook and making sure that it actually works, most of the time we don't use authentication, but when you actually put things into production, that's when you want to make sure that you have uh, some sort of authentication. Very quickly, authentication is very simple. You can go into basic auth, you can create a new credential and essentially you will be making a user and a password that you will have to include in the data that you send in to make sure that it actually fires. The reason why you want to do this is if someone accidentally gets access to your address or your URL and you have an NAN workflow attached to it with something like let's say an AI model, malicious actors can actually trigger that and drain your wallet if your credit card is connected to the API credits. So for production workflows, for things that are actually working and need to be stable, you always want to do something. So what we could do is just add test and password could also be test here. You just save it and then you have your authentication. Just make sure you remember those. So then you also have respond. Now, most of the time you just want to keep it as immediately because as soon as the data comes in or as soon as the webhook fires, everything else happens on NAN that comes afterwards. The other one that you could use is using respond to webhook node, which was the node that you saw when you actually put in webhook. So those two are the two options that you're 90% of the time going to use. Once you start to do more complex workflows, you might get into that, but we're not going to go into this. And then you also have a bunch of different options that I won't be getting into too much. One of the cool things I will say though, is you might in some cases want to whitelist IPs to make sure that the webhooks are actually coming in. Often if there's firewalls or some uh, extra cybersecurity for our clients, we need to whitelist the specific IPs where the data is flowing and where the webhooks are actually coming from. But for most cases, you don't have to do this. Then going into the settings part of things, these are pretty similar to most nodes on uh, NAN. 
One of the interesting ones is allow multiple HTTP methods. You don't have to turn it on, but if you do turn it on, what you'll see is you'll actually be able to get both get and post or whatever you pick, but 99% of the time it's going to be get or post. So if there is the case in documentation where you're not sure what's going on, you can do this. Or you, if you have a webhook uh, or you want an endpoint that gets different types of methods coming in, uh, you can do this. Now, we don't really use this that much. I haven't really found a use case, but I do find it's pretty interesting and convenient. Always output data. So even if nothing comes through, that it always outputs something. Execute once. You can see this on other NA and nodes and so on. So now let's actually talk about how to set up a webhook connection. So let's go back here. Let's pick the trigger. And now let's start working on it. For this example, I'll be using SmartLead, which is a software for sending cold emails and doing email outbound marketing. So if we go to SmartLead, we can see that usually softwares have something like add a webhook or, or send a webhook, send an HTTP request, something like that. So we can see webhook name, webhook URL, then association type is smartly specific and event type is also how the software actually works. So for this, let's say webhook video is going to be the webhook name. Now we see webhook URL. Since we are testing and we're actually right now building, we're not putting it into production right away. What we'll do is we'll actually get the test URL. We're going to copy this and we're going to put it here. Now, association type will keep it account level and for the event we're going to do lead category updated so if in the software i put a lead is let's say interested then it sends a webhook and this will automatically send it to my crm or something like that that's the potential idea of this and we can see send test to webhook now one of the things that i did mention before was often you'll see whether it's a get or a post request here, there is easy step-by-step -step guide, but honestly, I'm a little bit too lazy and I want to move fast. So let's just see if this works. So we have get, so let's listen for the actual test event and let's send test to webhook. So let's see if anything comes through and nothing really has come through. And when most of the time when people can't get their webhooks working and they just keep pressing tests and nothing is working and you're wondering, it, Am I that stupid that I can't figure it out? Most of the time, and I still do it myself every now and then, is you are using the wrong HTTP method. So let's try this again, but instead of get, let's try post. Let's listen for the test event and let's send test to webhook. And we can see that the data actually came through. And this is everything from the smart lead side about when a lead is marked interested in that software. Awesome. So as you could see, all it took was making sure get and post are different. Now, let's say you get the data, you pin it because you don't want to do the testing back and forth. You're gonna come here and you're gonna keep adding just nodes on top of everything. And let's say your system is now ready to go. What do you do now? What's the difference between test and production? One step that you cannot forget to do, otherwise your system won't work, is you want to go back here and instead of test URL, you want to put production URL. You want to copy this and add it to wherever the data is coming from. You want to replace your test URL with this. Now, mind you, you can only test does the production URL work with actually taking the action. So if I were to listen for a test event, you can see that the URL here is still saying test, right? Now the smart lead example is very simple because they kind of already have all of the data written out that the webhook is sending or coming into NAN. But with webhooks, what you can also do is do parameters. So you can do headers, you can do query, you can do path, and you can also send the actual body of the information. So I'll be using smart lead as an example to how this can work as well. So if we go to smart lead, which is a very similar software to something like Airtable, you can see that I have this table called webhook security. We have a record with birthday gift. Let's write a description or information. Let's say happy birthday to you just for some data. And then we also have the send one. So what I want to do here is show you how you can use something like smartly to do internal automations. So 
we can add an automation when a record matches conditions, webhook security, and send equals to yes for this very simple example. Then what you can do is make an HTTP request or send a webhook. If we come here, we will see request URL. So this is just the, the path, the address. We can actually change the HTTP method as well. We can have get, post, put, delete, patch. We can do whatever. But then we also have headers, we have parameters, and then uh, response content. So let's quickly talk about this. If we wanted to do some sort of test here, let's copy this here. So now if you're used to HTTP request nodes, you know that in headers you have things like you can add an API key, you need to add content type, application, JSON. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the HTTP request video. So when we talked about authentication, what you can do with the headers is you can go to actually header authentication and you can create a new credential with the name and value. So let's say uh, we put in security here and we set a password for, let's say password. Password and we save this, let's say webhook vid as well. Then we can add a security layer here, which is security and password. This is what it should be. Now URL parameters usually are things that come added to the end of the URL with something like question mark and then comes um, path something something. These usually just show more specifically where the data is coming from or where it's going. Um, it can get a little bit more complex. It's not as simple, of course, but most of the time the webhooks or the documentation tell you exactly what to do. So you don't need to worry about it too much. And then finally, as response content on smart suite, you can send the actual content as an object, array, text, boolean, or a number. Now, what I want to do is first, I want to give it a shot without the authentication and see if we actually get it uh, in with our tests. So what I'll do is none and I'll remove this as well. You can see that there's a test step here. So what I'll do is listen for test event and I can see that this is post. So let's put post here. And let's run a test. So we can see that actually the data came through. We don't have any parameters, any query or any body right now. So the next thing is if we actually wanted to send some data through on at least on uh, smart suite, you can send it with headers. For example, if I wanted to add text, let's put what was the um, information. So this should be happy birthday to you, right? So let's listen for test event again. Let's test the step, let's information. So for a test, we should, this is going to be blank, but let's see if we, so yeah, text. So this would also have it here. Now you can also send it in body by just picking information. So if we test here, we can see that it actually came in the body now, happy birthday. With a lot of data, you want to be sending this through with the body, not the header. But what I want to try now is the actual authentication. So we did uh, header authentication, webhook vid before, and as we can see that we have no headers. So let's see if the test event actually works here. Happy birthday. Are we listening? We're listening. And let's run the test. And you can see that there's actually an error forbidden because now we have an authentic authentication in the way. So let's go back. And since this is a header authentication, what you want to use is a header. So we're going to add a header and our extremely secure uh, code or password security here is security. And we say password. So let's now go and listen again 
Oh, we're already listening. And let's test this step. Let's say happy birthday again. And let's run this test and see what happens now. Now we'll be waiting for a little bit. And we can see that it actually got the code 200, which means successful. And we got this through. So you can see without our security password, it wouldn't come through, but now it is coming through. And finally, once you're done with everything, you just want to put in production URL and you would go here and you would change this out like this and you are done. And this is essentially most of what you need to actually start working with webhooks. Now, once you learn this and you start to figure out how to test, how to put them into production and how to make sure that your actual endpoints are secure, you can then start connecting way more uh, different applications or services with NAN to start automating more. And once you want to start working with something like webhook responses and uh, more advanced features on webhooks, then you'll already have the base to start figuring it out with just some like Googling or asking AI to help you out. If you enjoyed this video and if you found this valuable, I would appreciate a like. If you want to learn more about NAN, I have a playlist on my channel that you can go check out. If you're more interested in working and seeing projects that we do with webhooks or without webhooks we have a free school community called systems and soda that you can join today the link is in the description and hopefully i'll see you there